like the prophet Jeremiah to break down and to build up. And the thing that John shatters first is our religious pride. It's the worst kind of pride, friends. When people think they are better because of what they practice or what they believe, that they are right and everyone else is wrong. Or the pride that John speaks of that sinks into our heritage. He says, don't say to yourself, we have Abraham as our father. I could hear him today speaking to us and say, don't say to yourselves, well, our grandparents were pillars of this church. Or I am a descendant of Adam Laban. That this would be anything. As someone recently shared with me, they said, our heritage and a dollar might get us a cup of coffee. Don't be presumptuous. It doesn't matter what you did ten years ago. It matters what are you doing now. How are you being a bridge for God to enter into this world now? A sentence I don't often use because I think it's been overused by evangelicals, but one that's important is where Paul said that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That all of us are in need of mercy and grace. That all of us need to walk humbly with our God and our faith. John's words are harsh, but they're fair ones. And then when people speak about what must we do, John doesn't speak of personal piety, but of generosity. He says, Forever, whoever of you owns two coats, give to the one who has none. How about six coats? The one hundred pair of shoes. What would he say about two houses? Two cars. John's call is that we become a generous people. Not judged so much by how much we give, but by how much we keep. You know, I've often wanted to have the stewardship campaign done in a time that was totally separate from the budget. And the reason for that being is that I feel like whenever it's tied in with the budget, you always feel that we have an agenda. Kind of like the television preacher, you know? God bless you, just give more to me. But I really wish there was a way that I could separate that and let me know that God will bless you when you open yourself up and you share more of what you have and who you are. Regardless of the body. It's a spiritual discipline that can open to you and reveal the reality of God. If we read on, John tells his audiences, he says, which is us today, it's, I think something fairly simple. He says, be fair and be honest. To the tax collector, it's interesting that he picks a tax collector and Romans, both who were seen as enemies of Israel. But he doesn't tell the tax collector to stop being a tax collector because they were collecting taxes for Rome. He doesn't tell them to leave their job. He simply tells them to not collect any more than what they were prescribed to collect. And did those Roman soldiers who were violent oppressors of the nation, he doesn't tell them they quit being soldiers. He tells them not to bribe anyone, not to take from those who are powerless to stop them or, or blame someone for something so they can confiscate their property, which was often used to rob those who were less powerful. You see, this is our message for Advent. And the message isn't about going out and changing them. 
It's about changing us. Changing me. In very concrete ways. It's about getting the beam out of my own eye before, cutting, before trying to get the speck out of anyone else's. In Advent, we are called to prepare the way to become the change we seek. To put aside our pride and to walk humbly with God. Second of all, to become generous, especially to those in need. And third, to be honest and trustworthy in our dealings with others, to be people of integrity, whether as business people or as community leaders, people of integrity that the world can look to when they see very little honesty or integrity and say, we know that those people there and that group there is being honest with us and we can trust them. We do this, and friends, we may not build a bridge over the music line, but we just might build a bridge for God to come. A path for God to enter not only our lives, but enter our church and our community and our world. As John's words say, and as the scripture ends when it talks of them. That we might make a way for God that all flesh, all creation might see the salvation of God. Let us pray. God, we look to ourselves as we look to you. Help us to take time during this week to take account. Help us to our focus to be more on you than on others and ourselves. Help us to be a generous people and help us to live with the integrity. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Please join me in the common commission. Let us go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, remembering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, go with each and every one of you.